Welcome to Arrow Channel, and welcome back to Sheet Metal Course. A couple of videos ago, we learned how to create a base flange, which is the first feature of our sheet metal part. In this video, we are going to look at some other options for creating that base flange. When we created that first base flange, we used what called a single closed sketch. So if we edit that base flange feature and edit the sketch underneath, we can see we've just got a single rectangle. This just gave us a single flat sheet. This is called single closed because it's just a single profile, there's only one of them, and it's fully closed, so there's no gaps around the outside. So this type is called single closed. We can also create a base flange using a different type called a single open contour. So if I just exit this sketch, and then delete that edge flange that we added, and then edit the base flange sketch, and we've got this rectangle underneath here, I'm going to select that and delete it. So now instead of using a single closed profile, we can now try a single open profile. So for example, I'm just get the line tool and just draw a straight line all the way across from the origin. I'm going to set the distance. And then when we exit the sketch, we can see we've created a base flange just from that single line. If we edit the base flange feature, we can also change the width here. And as before, we can still access all of the sheet metal parameters that we had before. And we've still got the flat pattern folder at the bottom here. Instead of just a single line, we can actually also make the sketch more complex. Let's edit the sketch underneath that base feature. And then get the line tool again, and let's just add a few more lines maybe a vertical one kind of here, and then a horizontal one over here. Now I'm just going to add some more dimensions again. So maybe 30 here, and 30 here. So now we have this chalk shape, and now when we exit the sketch, we can see that those lines have created a new shape of base flange. So this is sort of similar to using a thin feature extrude in general solid modeling. If we look at the edges of the base flange here, they're actually curved, even though the underlying sketch was completely perpendicular and had those tried corners. That's because the bend radius is automatically applied to these sharp corners, and the size of that bend is the bend radius that we specified in the sheet metal folder here. Now that we've got some bends in the model, it's possible to actually flatten this. This wasn't possible with the previous base flange, because it was just a single flat sheet. But it is with this one, because we've got these two bands in the model. To flatten the part, all we have to do is go to the sheet metal tab, and then select flatten. Which is this one here. We can also select it on the toolbar, wherever our toolbar is. It's exactly the same tool. So click on flatten, and now the part is completely flattened. We've got these dotted lines that show the band locations. And if we can't see those, we can also just go to the view menu, then hide show, and just make sure that our sketches are turned on. We should also now see that the flat pattern feature, which is the very last feature of the sheet metal bar, has now been unsuppressed. So pressing that flatten button essentially just unsuppresses that flat pattern feature. And to fold the part up again, we can either just press the flatten button again, or we can click this icon in the top right corner. And now we can see that the flat pattern feature is suppressed again, so it's basically turned off in the model. When we are creating base flanges using these single open sketches, we don't have to just use straight lines. So if we edit this sketch again, we can also use something like an arc or a spline. I'm just gonna throw an arc up here. Something like this. And then I'm gonna make it tangent to the stride line here. And then when we exit the sketch, we can see we've got that nice curving top section. And we can also flatten this and we'll get a completely flat pattern as normal. So this type of base flange covers what's called the single open sketch. We've already covered what's called the single closed sketch, which is any single closed shape like a rectangle or circle. 
So that will be something like this, just a single closed rectangle. But there's actually a third option as well. This is called multiple contain closed. We don't need to remember all of these names, but basically this one is just a closed sketch with other closed sketches within it. So to show an example, I'm going to edit this rectangle again, and we could have some other closed profiles within it. So for example, these could be things like screw holes or maybe cutouts for our parts. And then when we exit the sketch, we can see those holes and cutouts are directly in the base flange. Personally, if I was making something like this, I would probably keep the base flange as just a very simple rectangle and then I would add these holes and cutouts later on. Just because it gives you a little bit more flexibility if you want to turn off features or adjust them later on. I just wanted to show that we do have this option and we can save a step there and save some time if we want to. So to recap, base flanges are usually the first feature in our sheet metal bar and they can be made in three main ways. So we can have a single closed sketch, which is a closed shape, something like a rectangle or a circle. We can have a single open sketch, that's something like a collection of open lines, or arcs, splines, and so on. And then finally, we can have a multiple content closed. That's what we just looked at. So we have a few different options there to start our part. In the next video, we are just gonna take a quick look at some different sheet metal materials. And then after that, we'll finally start adding some new features to our base flange. Thank you for watching, please subscribe if you like, hope it can be a little helpful and useful.